Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Gaming here again, uh, bringing you another Zeus tutorial. Uh, today we'll be covering uh, some more advanced uh, controls, and uh, we'll be going over some of the modules that Zeus has uh, to dispose of. So, um, first off, let's go ahead and go over um, what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm in the uh, spectator mode, or the... Uh, it just gets rid of the HUD, I guess. Uh, you can get to this mode by hitting backspace, and uh, if you hit backspace again, it will take you back to the editing mode. So, um, last time, a couple of uh, people asked me uh, out of the comment section on another one of my uh, friend's videos, um, how did I do some of the things I showed last episode? Well, first off, I accessed the main interface with the, um, the mood, the formation, the speed, and the stance. Uh, I access that by double clicking on this uh, box here. And that will go for every unit that has a box over its head. And this will also select the entire squad. As you can see, they're all selected by clicking on that box. You can delete it. And uh, Ready. you can move it around. You can change their orientation. You can change their elevation. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and make a paratrooper squad. So if I wanted to do this, any unit uh, that is available, if it gets dropped from a certain height, it will automatically deploy a uh, parachute. As you can see here, they all open the sink and they'll all just fall straight to the ground. I can give them a waypoint and they'll all start floating towards it. Mm, usually the squad lead's the only one that does that. The rest just fall wherever else. So they'll all uh, float down to the ground and uh, get back into formation. Um, so you can do this with vehicles. Uh, any any vehicle in the game. You can do this with people and um, with uh, helicopters you can do the same thing. So right here uh, they're going ahead and landing and they'll uh, get back up and then you select the whole team Welcome. and you can move them. Uh, there you go. See the team leader just died and the new team leader was assigned to this dude. So on the way. You get them all back in line over here and uh, continue on. So a few more uh, advanced commands are with the control key. Uh, the control key, if while holding it down and you select a unit, this will ungroup him from the current squad he's in. So if you don't want as big of a fire team, or if you want to make two separate uh, fire teams very quickly, you can hold down the control and click and drag away two units, and then drag them together, and you can make a, an entire. Uh, squad out of just two guys, or a uh, sentry out of two guys from a fire team. And this will also help during missions if you need two guys to go take cover behind uh, this rock, per se. You double click here, change it to prone, change it to a line formation, and click near the, the wall, and they'll go ahead and go prone, and they'll crawl to the wall. And then if you want to split these guys up, which would be effective if you want to give uh, your guys, or your players, uh, that you should be Zeusing for, uh, a little bit of tension. And their ranks, you can go ahead and do the same thing over here, and just change their mode, and then have them do the same thing. So you can get uh, AI to do pretty much everything that you need them to do, and in a timely manner. So let's. Um, Understood. Okay, so here we have is a map. Uh, here we have a map of Altus, uh, and up here I have the markers uh, tab selected. With this, I can go ahead and uh, put these on the map. This can indicate the ground teams, uh, what they need to do. Uh, in order to either complete their mission and their objective or so on and so forth so uh, you can place any of these down uh, what some people like to do uh, in some of their Zeus missions is place down dots to symbolize uh, boundaries or borders uh, for different factions so I'm gonna go ahead and do that show you real quick so after you place down uh, somewhat of a border, you can scroll down the list and find the faction of your choice. And if you double click on each of these marks, you can change its color and uh, add text to it. So it'll be like LOL or LZ here. So then this will give your guys on the ground somewhere to meet, rally, and players can do this as well if you hadn't already know or if you're a noob to uh, on the three. Uh, so you can pretty much do that all over the map. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a scenario uh, set up, and I'll come back okay, when that is finished. Uh, so 
here I have the uh, mission or scenario set up. Basically what happens, or, well, first off, uh, let me go ahead and tell you what, this is the reason why I uh, got into Zeus. Basically, this is your story. Uh, anything that you create or, or put, place down, you can add that into your scenario. And whatever you say, it pretty much goes. Uh, as long as the people agree with it and it's not uh, utterly embarrassing. But anyway, so uh, what we have here is uh, AI forces were fleeing a destruction site from uh, NATO forces here at the weapons dump. They destroyed it and they headed on down the highway and they stopped to get some gas and they got engaged so they started driving up the road and whenever their truck uh, took some hits and they crashed it into the uh, little church thing here. So what they are going to have to do is uh, call in an airdrop with the uh, uh, with uh, repair supplies so they can uh, go ahead and get their truck fixed up and get all their units out. So let's go ahead and uh, show. <laughs> let's go ahead and get them their uh, their resupply. So basically, if you this was if those were players and they were gonna uh, waiting for that, you can go ahead and place down a ammo box here and uh, empty it out. So you don't have to do this uh, single-handedly or whatever. Uh, the best crate for this would be the supply box AF. Select it and then go ahead and press the clear button. That'll get everything out of it. So what else would be in a uh, supply drop? So you would have clearly a couple backpacks maybe. You can throw those in there, about three or four. And then uh, you could have some extra mags for rifles machine guns, launchers, or sniper rifles. Just go ahead and throw a couple uh, mags in here. Let's get the 6.5 mags. Just throw a couple tracer mags in there for them. And yeah, so then you can have that. You can throw in some uh, miss, miss, no, not those. Not here. Um, they use the Zuber, I believe. Now it's going to throw four five in there. So that basically filled up the whole crate, but we forgot to add in the repair kits and whatnot. So we can knock off a few backpacks, maybe. So yeah, let's do that. See, oh wow, look at that. So we can just throw one backpack in there and go to items. And we could go ahead and throw in a toolkit, which is what they requested, and then throw in a first aid kit. That'll help treat the soldiers in the ground and anything like that. You can make these custom or you can just go ahead and throw in a support or a supply box and uh, drop it in. So anything's your choice. Uh, if you want to, you can throw in hats, anything that they request. Uh, as long as you're lenient and you want to give it to them. Um, that should pretty much conclude that. Now, to drop it in. Uh, so let's say they go ahead and put a mark on the map where they want it. They want it here. So let's go to markers and they want the supply drop here. So let's go ahead and put a green or yellow independent supply drop. There it is. So they want it there. And they're probably going to mark it with smoke. So let's go ahead and get some smoke up in here. There we are. And they'll most likely mark it with purple smoke, representing an airdrop. Then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and select the block box, move it as close as you can so it's out of sight within uh, for the players. Then you want to go ahead and pick it up and uh, move it over their position, and then go ahead and drop it near or where a plane flying over might be able to see it. So let's just give it to them there. Then it's gonna unfold. You're gonna hear the plane fly over. It's gonna fall. It's gonna fall slowly so. It somewhat represented by a jet flying over and it's going to drift so wherever it drifts either you can simulate them picking it up with some sort of vehicle or towing it and dragging it to where they need it uh, or you wherever it lands that's where it lands and that they can't change that so it's your call as the Zeus if you want to role play with them a little bit that's perfectly fine but yeah it's going to go ahead and uh, float down over here and they're going to have to go get it so basically that's how you do supply drops and uh, whatnot. So before I go ahead and end this and go on to our next segment, um, we'll go ahead and show you some Zeus mod modules. So as we go down the list we have animals. Animals consist of the butterflies, uh, the goats, poultry, chicken, seagulls, and then sheep. 
eagles just kind of fly off in their own little thing. Sheep and stuff, they'll slowly wander apart from each other, and if you want them back, you just move the thing and they'll come back. Uh, butterflies, you can just add them wherever, and they naturally spawn as well, as you can see here. So they'll go ahead and do their own thing. Chickens uh, will uh, wander around and ghosts will do the same thing. So that pretty much covers animals. Audio. This is very fun if you want to have a somewhat uh, tense or dynamic mission. You can uh, play some music. You can uh, put on some lead music, which will be like if you're charging the battles. might be something you want to listen to. I don't know. And you just click on the song. You change the volume here for everyone. Uh, you, Depending on the person, they might turn up the music. They might turn it down because uh, the default volume of Arma is very loud. So I had to change that dramatically whenever I uh, went ahead and started the game. So uh, you want to go ahead and keep this kind of low. Uh, that'll help out and if someone does complain about it, uh, you can go ahead and press OK so they'll say, oh no it's too loud, turn that down. Then you go to play music, select the same song and then turn it down from here, go and it'll replace the old song. So that's a good way to get music into your scenario and if you want to turn it off completely, just select zero. So that's how you play music go ahead and play radio announcements. You can select this for any side and if you want to you can get specific and select a player in your server. Uh, so basically we want to go ahead and play this for Op4 and then say that uh, reinforcements are en route. So all Op4 players on the ground or AI will hear that friendly reinforcements are en route. So if I were Zeus I would say friendly reinforcements are coming from the south uh, near Paros, and they'll drive up the highway and come pick them up if they need be. I'm not going to show you that, but that's a simple deal that you can do. And you can play sounds, uh, like firefight sounds, uh, battlefield sounds. So you hear here. And then you have all these other ones, like all these other ones. And uh, each one will have its own unique sound. Uh, the sounds mainly are for the um, are mainly for the like uh, VR. So these three are the ones you want to be focusing on: the alarm, the sound, battlefield explosions, and the battlefield firefight. Those are really the only ones you want to be messing with. Uh, next, we have chem lights. These will be good for uh, at nighttime missions if you need to light up an LZ or light up a path uh, on a base, and you can just drop those down and they'll shine. Uh, for up to 30 minutes, and then they'll go out, and then you just replace them. So, uh, next we'll go on to the effects. Uh, IR grenades. So, night vision. Uh, plop one of these down, and it'll blink. So you can mark an LZ with that discreetly. Uh, and tracers. You can place that down, and it'll shoot off a spray of green tracers. And uh, you can see those very clearly at night. You can add in ambience, like so. Let's say I wanted to add some tracers over here at the base, like the firefight's going on behind the hill. And then on the tracers will be flying up every per periodically. And then these guys over here can say, "Oh no, there's a firefight going on over there. Maybe our boys are in trouble or something like that." I don't know. Whatever you want. So that goes over the effects. Environment. Okay. So this is a interesting one. If you want to have uh, post process, which will change the color of the um, main, the main color scheme of the uh, surrounding area, or the whole game, I guess. And then I like to play on Mediterranean. It, it basically enhances the blues and the blacks of the game, and uh, it adds a really nice tone. I prefer it. Uh, but next, we can uh, go ahead and skip time. This is how you change it from day to night very quickly if you need a time lapse anything like that. Uh, if you were a player and I changed the time, it would say uh, plus or 14 hours later. Yeah, if I did 14 hours, it would say your screen would go completely black. It would say 14 hours later, and then your screen would fade back in, and it would be nighttime like this. And as you can see here, chem lights are on and all that. If we go back to effects, we can go to IR tracer or IR grenades, and they will be blinking if we go to night vision. There we go. And then if we also put down more tracers, you can clearly see them. So, also with this, uh, let's go ahead and skip time back to day. Night isn't necessarily too... Uh... There we are. So now we can go to time acceleration. This basically speeds up your time. So you can pause time completely. 
So the clock will not move, but the game the game time clock will change. But have it at a realistic time speed, you want to leave it at one. But if you want to have it like enhanced, so you're like out fighting for days and make it like hint it to the players that you've been fighting for days, you speed up the time. So every couple of minutes is um, a different day or something like that. So let's just go ahead and leave it on one. Continue on. Uh, next would be weather. Uh, you can change the time or the weather of it, and then you can change how much fog is there. So let's go ahead and put it on rainy, and then the graphics change, and the weather will change, and then it'll start raining periodically on and off. So that concludes environment. Uh, let's move on down to fire support. Fire support, pretty basic. Put down a thing, and the thing will explode. It's dynamic and everything, so it'll spawn in, and it'll hit the ground. Boom. Boom. And that'll do that, and you can do that with Cass as well. Copy that. And you choose a Strike faction now on this Next is players. You can illuminate positions in the dark with that. You It does work during the daytime, but not as clearly. But as you... you know, actually, now you can't even see them without uh, night vision on. Oops. Oh, whatever. Oh, there's our cast. It's dynamic jets. We'll do the fighting. The rockets and whatever. Next we have the objectives. Uh, each one of these is pretty much self-explanatory. The only ones I'll go over are the attack and defend. You can make an area where two factions can war over it. And, uh... Yeah, so you can make the, the independent, uh, the defenders, and only, uh, the only faction that can take, uh, take it from them is the blue four faction, and, uh, vice versa. So let's, uh, just cancel that, and, uh, uh, yeah, so let's move on. The rest of these are pretty ex uh, explanatory. If you want to put on a neutralized marker, put that on there, and uh, all players in the game will know to neutralize this specific unit. Once they do that, that will be uh, objective complete, and it will uh, go ahead and say mission completed. So, um, yeah, the rest of these are pretty self-explanatory as well. Uh, next is a respawn. We've already went over this in the first video. Go check that out if you haven't already. Uh, next we have the scenario flow. Uh, briefing, you can type whatever you want in here. So it'll be like, like that. So every time someone new gets into the game, they'll see this briefing. Also, you can change the scenario name. So I'll name this AAF. Oh, no, caps lock is on. AAF. Stranded, <laughs> and that'll and that so the name of it will change right here, as you can see. And uh, with that, you can make your own custom name, so it's not just Zeus Game Master. And then, if you ever want to end the scenario, just spawn this down, choose which one you would like to choose, and then just press OK. We're gonna do that in a second. Respawn tickets. You do not want to mess with these as much because players. Um, necessarily don't like them unless they're doing uh, like a PvP style. Um, then that's really the only time you want to mess with those. So if you, if your team has a set number of lives and that team dies that amount of times, they won't be able to respawn after that. So if you want to do like a full-on attrition thing, you can go ahead and have respawn tickets. Um, so now moving on to smoke shells, you just plop these down and smoke will pop out of them pretty self-explanatory. Now, last one is training in Zeus. So, boot camp, you can set these up and it will do these. So, you just never w really want to mess with those unless you're making a custom, like, um, like a custom training mission for your uh, friends. So, next would be the hint. This is, um, it'll tell you different things, like, uh, the high command. So it'll explain these if you were doing it somewhat of a tutorial. It'll explain each of these and you press H to access it. So if I were to press H now it would bring up the fire support menu and this just helps you get along. So if you are not sure by watching this video you can always get in, mess around with Zeus and then press H for certain things and it'll tell you exactly what it does and how it works. So uh, punishment. This will, if you put over a certain unit, will make them do a certain action. So if we go over to this guy right here, this poor dude, and we put the squat on him, he will 
put away his gun and begin to do squats through the wall <laughs> and he'll do about four or five of those and then he'll just stand back up there we are and that pretty much concludes training now Zeus uh, this is my one of the most useful ones you have the arsenal ability this if you do not already know just allows you to change any uh, player or not player any AI's um, armaments so I could change his weapon to a CSAT weapon and then back again so we could basically just mess around with the unit and his gear we can make him look like a total civilian if we wanted to now next we have the remote control this is how you take control of units and uh, do their tasks so if I want to take control of this guy I'm now the, the player on the ground this uh, will help if uh, you want to add if your AI aren't working correctly you can hop in them give them uh, specific directions through the AI and they should work or you can take control of the AI and play somewhat realistically like a human just to throw the uh, throw a curveball at the players so let's say a player was hiding down there instead of being an AI and shooting here or at the ground or anything like that you could act like an AI shoot the ground a little bit but actually aim for them so it keeps them on edge so they're not just like oh this is just a simple mission whoop de do this Zeus doesn't know how to work and everything so you can just keep them on edge uh... the last but most remarkable and resilient uh, resembling thing of Zeus would be the lightning bolt you can go ahead and spawn one of these in at a time or you can hold down control spawn one in and then you can access it. But uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this will conclude the advanced uh, module, uh, Zeus <laughs> modules and uh, placement. I hope I can see you again in another tutorial. Uh, ask and leave comments down below about what kind of missions you want me to build and simulate, uh, and see if I can actually do that and show you how to. So um, thank you for watching. Hopefully we can do these uh, more in the future. And uh, see you later.